collateral estoppel, res judicata. For seasoned attorneys, these are things you learned in law school that you very rarely use in litigation. But here it is. Case came down called County of Sacramento Sheriff uh, Department, VWCAB, that deals with collateral estoppel. And man, is this case a double-edged sword. Hi, my name is Michael Burgess. I'm a legal certified specialist in California workers' compensation, and I'm a trial attorney. Collateral estoppel, res judicata, you know, these are things that are, are a bit complicated to remember. Um, quickly, res judicata deals with claim preclusion and collateral estoppel is preclusion of a specific issue. So really what's going on here is this. In this case, County of Sacramento uh, Sheriff's Department, they were adjudicating whether work-related stress caused a stroke for industrial causation. Um, in the meantime, it looks like there was a separate civil action dealing with uh, perhaps retaliation discrimination where they were adjudicating the retaliation causing stress and causing the stroke for damages under FIHA and ADA, etc. cetera. Um, and ultimately, why they were litigating the workers' comp case, the civil case was adjudicated and a jury determined that the um, plaintiff, the injured worker, did sustain an industrial injury due to stress. Then uh, the applicant attorney went down and was essentially saying, uh, this issue has been resolved. There's been a separate uh, civil court hearing and we are not going to relitigate whether the injury arose out of and was within the course of employment because the civil case is already dispositive on this. And very interesting case. Long story short, as the court said, we agree. We do agree that the civil court resolved that issue and that essentially there is what's referred to as judicial estoppel or collateral estoppel and that that issue, whether the stroke was industrial, has already been adjudicated and we're not going to relitigate it. Now, uh, in collateral estoppel, and remember, res judicata and collateral estoppel, very similar. One just deals with the entire claim like, hey, that claim has already been adjudicated elsewhere. We're not going to relitigate it here. And again, collateral estoppel is there's an issue in that adjudication uh, that we're not going to relitigate. Now, remember that under collateral estoppel, there's five elements that you have to prove. The first is that the issue sought to be precluded from relitigation is identical, right? It has to be the same issue. In this case, it's whether the stroke was caused by work stress, okay? Next, the issue was actually litigated in the former proceeding, meaning they actually adjudicated on the merits, which in this case, they did. Three, the issue was necessarily decided in the former proceeding. Um, so again, it, it needs to be actually litigated and actually decided. And again, there was a jury, jury verdict and it was upheld. Four, the decision in the former proceeding was on the merits and final. Again, you know, it has to be a final decision. It can't be interlocutory decision or something that's up on appeal. It needs to be adjudicated on its merits and final. And then five, the party against whom collateral estoppel is sought is the same as or in privity with the party in the former proceedings. Basically, all this is, is it's gotta be the same people, right? If you're litigating an issue with a different defendant who doesn't have the same motives or interest, you know, they're not gonna allow that to, to come in and stand. But if it's the same defendant or they're in privity and they're the same motives and, and they did do an adjudication on the merits, then the defendant is now, or, or the adverse party is collaterally stopped from relitigating the issue. Um, I think this is a great case. I really do. I, I've argued this uh, uh, quite often. I've actually had this used against me uh, uh, or attempted to be used against me on several occasions. Um, and this, this form is, is really judicial estoppel. Um, and, and this case has a much bigger holding and a double-edged sword that I want you know, seasoned practitioners to be careful with. And if you're an injured worker and you're litigating multiple causes of action in different you know, tribunals or, or venues, you know, you gotta be careful here. Let me, let me tell you a, a, an example of one time a defendant tried to use collateral estoppel or judicial estoppel against me. I was arguing uh, in the workers' comp case, EDD, state disability, determined my client was entitled to total temporary disability. I went to a jury trial where I was indicating that, but for my client's wrongful termination, he would have been able to work. 
Well, the defendant was trying to argue that EDD was a tribunal that adjudicated that he was unable to work, and therefore I was judicially stopped from indicating that he could work and was entitled to damages. Now, ultimately I prevailed on that because EDD did not have a final adjudication on the merits, uh, and that, that you know five-part test, really, they didn't meet any of those, okay? But here's the bigger implication uh, for really seasoned practitioners here. And it's, it's what I see is employment law and workers' comp law. Wrongful termination, retaliation, discriminations, causes of action under FIHA or ADA, you know, you're, you're adjudicating this. Um, often an injured worker's attorney uh, might file what's called a 132A. A 132A is basically a discrimination case that's within the venue of the WCAB where you are indicating because the filing of the claim form, there's been subsequent uh, discrimination or retaliation, and that's a 132A. Frankly, it's a slap on the wrist, you know, $10,000 max damages plus lost wages, uh, much of which is duplicative of what you can get in a civil uh, uh, arena or venue. And of course, in a civil venue, you can get pain, suffering, lost wage, punitive damages. Obviously, you file the 132A to preserve statutes and, and, and professional malpractice, but um, you want to focus your litigation on the civil side. Here's the double-edged sword. Let's say you have an applicant attorney who's not taking the 132A seriously, and a defense does take it seriously, pushes it to trial, and you lose. Well, guess what? There's going to be res judicata or collateral estoppel on that civil case potentially, and you may have unknowingly screwed a plaintiff after a of a very big civil judgment. Okay, so this case again, County of Sacramento Sheriff's Department, uh, really is dealing with collateral estoppel or judicial estoppel, uh, and it's very very important to know that if an issue has been adjudicated in another venue, whether it's at the WCAB level or the Superior Court, um, that that holding in that case may be applicable in the other jurisdiction. If you have questions or concern, one, if you're not if you're an injured worker and you're not represented, get an attorney. This is unbelievably complicated and you need an attorney. And if this is uh, another applicant attorney watching this video, you have questions, honestly, I geek out on this stuff. Give me a call. I will happily uh, go over your case and give you my analysis uh, because I'm here to help all injured workers regardless of whether I represent them or not. If you have questions, we have the answers. Give us a call.